So today we're gonna to learn how to turn a digital photo into an antique photo. More specifically, we're gonna to try to emulate that 35 millimeter film or expired film look. If that sounds exciting to you, stay tuned for today's tutorial. So what's going on everyday people? I'm Chad Thompson and today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to make your new photos look antique. Now this is a really cool effect you could do to impress your friends and family on Instagram. You could do this just to show off your cool Photoshop skills or if you're working on a series or a type of project. Now for the rest of this week, we are gonna talk about different types of photography editing that you can do to manipulate photos in Adobe Photoshop. If that stuff sounds exciting to you and you're not already subscribed to this channel, I highly recommend you do so. But without further ado, let's hop into today's tutorial. Now today for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys actually how to create kind of like a Polaroid look. And we'll go into kind of some other different styles you could do in later videos. So the first thing you do wanna do is hit Command J on your keyboard and that's gonna open up a new layer. I'm just gonna quickly name this our uh, working layer and then all this is is just a layer that we're creating in case we make some mistakes we don't actually affect the original image and we can do all the editing on top of that so now that we have that layer selected what we're gonna do is go up to adjustments here or you can click on the little circle down here either way we're adding a curves adjustment layer so what we want to do is because this is an older image that's withstood the test of time more particularly a Polaroid we want to make this thing pretty faded, you know, over the course of time, especially if these photos have been improperly kept or stored in sunlight, they're really going to be kind of a, a little bit faded and kind of beat up. So let's go ahead and fade that out. And then let's just go ahead and add in just a little bit more of our blacks and contrast back in. And then we can go ahead and kind of adjust the uh, mid tones and the highlights a little bit. I actually recommend to maybe overexpose those slightly because again, this is a Polaroid film that we're editing here. It wasn't the most perfect thing in the entire world. So let's go ahead and click on and off. You can see what changes we've made. We're not near where we're gonna go, but we're getting there. So the next thing I need you to do, I'm just gonna name this fade really quickly, but is make another curves adjustment layer. But this one we're gonna do a little bit differently. We're actually gonna go into the individual color channels of the red, green, and blue and edit those. So go ahead and go into your red color channel here. And what we're gonna do is in these shadows, we're gonna pull our S curve up and then our highlights, we're gonna kind of pull it a little bit down. Now it doesn't have to be extreme. I mean, you're not like totally throwing it all the way up here, way back down here, but just kind of give a little bit of an S curve, you know, just a slight little easy Sunday drive, grandma in the Cadillac or something. That's all we want to do. Now in the green channel, you want to do kind of the same, but a little bit opposite. So in the shadows, we're going to pull the greens down just a little bit. And then in the highlights, we're going to pull those up just a little bit, but not too much. Again, you want this to be really subtle. So now in the blue section, we're gonna do a little bit differently. We're gonna grab the bottom anchor point for the shadows and just kind of pull that up. I do it about 50%. And then for the highlights, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna pull that down to about 50%. So this is gonna give you a cross processed look, which is just kind of, you know, with your reds and greens and blues, and it's gonna give you kind of this weird little look to it. If you are unhappy with the results you have, you can go back into your curve adjustments here and kind of alter that. So if it's a little bit too green for you and you wanna go more magenta, you can do that, or you can pull up in your shadows here. Whatever you wanna to do to make those adjustments, I like mine to be a little bit more of the magenta and the red look. If you like more of the green, go for it. So that pretty much is finished there. So I'm just gonna name this layer CP for cross process. So now that we have that complete, we wanna emulate light leaks in an image. So the way you do that is go back down to the bottom here to your adjustment layer options, hit solid color. Now for the first color we wanna utilize, I like to do a really bright hot pink. So with this layer selected, set your opacity somewhere around 25% and set your blending mode to soft light. So now you kind of give it this really hot pink overcast over the image, but we're not gonna leave it just like that. So what I want you to do is hit D on your keyboard. That's just gonna make sure that you have white and black selected as your foreground and background colors. And if you hit X, that's gonna make your foreground and background switch. So just make sure black is the one you have selected. Now with a very large soft edged brush, what I want you to do is make sure you have your color fill layer mask selected and just kind of paint away some of that magenta in the image. What we're doing here is simulating 
light leaks that came through the camera or the lens. You know, it's kind of a beat up camera. It's a little bit older. Lights leaked through. Maybe through the uh, the film exposing and developing process, there was some problems with the chemicals and it kind of led to this bleeding over. So that looks pretty good the way that it is, but let's add another one on. Let's do a different color. I'm actually gonna do kind of this bright yellow, kind of like a golden color. And we're gonna do the same thing. So set your opacity somewhere around about 20%. Set your blend mode to soft light. And then what we're gonna do is with a black brush with the layers mask selected, kind of just paint away some of those different areas. And you can just kind of do it in different patterns. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you take too much away, again, you can always just kind of paint some more in. Hit X on your keyboard to make white your foreground color. And then you can actually go and paint in some areas with some of that gold. So that's it. I mean, that's pretty much what we got as far as getting the image to look this way, but there's one more step we need to do. So with your working layer down here, we're gonna make a copy again by hitting Command J. So now we have another layer. So what I want you to do is go up to Filter, go to Blur, and Gaussian Blur, Gaussian Blur, however you like to pronounce it, and we're gonna set a pretty decent amount of about eight pixels on there. Just go ahead and click OK. And then from there, you wanna take your opacity and just kind of pull that back down. And what we're doing is basically just kind of softening up the image because, you know, if you were an amateur taking photos on a Polaroid, you probably weren't always gonna be extreme in focus, especially if it's a situation where the lighting was kind of low, you're gonna have a little bit of movement to the camera and it's not gonna be 100% sharp. So now we've got the image a little bit softer like that. What I'm gonna do is just go through my layers and merge everything down by hitting Command E and just merge it all into one big file. So once we have our file selected, all I wanna do is hit Command A on the keyboard and then Command C to copy that layer. Go over to our Polaroid image and hit Command V. Now, if you get a screen like this, there's a cool little trick you could do to make this 10 times easier for you. So if you hold in Command on your keyboard and then hit the minus key, it's actually gonna make your total canvas smaller inside the screen so you can better edit. Now, all we're gonna do is hold down Shift as we resize this image here to fit inside of this Polaroid. And we're just gonna kinda pull that up a little bit and then kinda make this fit inside of the thing. We're just gonna hit enter real quick to accept those changes. Now, if you wanna do this a little bit better, a little bit more professionally, what you would wanna do is bring your uh, actual photo layer, pull it under the Polaroid, select this black area inside the Polaroid, excuse me there. So you could just backspace delete that and your photo is right underneath. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video today. If you did and you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and leave a thumbs up so I know that you guys enjoyed that and you're excited about the rest of the week's videos in photo manipulation using Adobe Photoshop. Now we're not gonna go in extreme detail just yet. We're kind of hitting the basics on things this week, getting you guys familiar with Photoshop and some of the different editing techniques you could do so that way we can move on to more advanced tutorials later on. And as always, be sure to create something new today.